In this video, we continue our discussion of electronic structure of multi-electronic atoms. Okay, we have seen in prior videos what the electronic structure for the uh, hydrogen atom and the helium atom uh, are. And then uh, what we're going to do here is try to continue to learn uh, what the electronic configurations are for uh, atoms uh, beyond helium in the periodic table. All right, so let's think about uh, what we have no known until now. Uh, the way that we actually express uh, the electronic configurations for atoms is to just take, take a look at the wave functions of electrons and express them in the simplest way that we can think of. So for example, for uh, hydrogen, we actually know that the uh, lowest energy solution to the Schrodinger equation is uh, uh, what we call the 1s orbital as a wave function. And for the helium atom, what we actually know is that uh, the electronic configuration can be expressed uh, by something that we call 1s2. Uh, this has a lot of meaning in it, and that uh, is just a shorthand notation for what really is happening here. What really is happening is that in the helium atom you have two electrons. Both of them can be described with 1s wave functions, okay, but they have anti-parallel spins. This is what this term is actually telling you. So you can see how electronic configurations are a very easy, uh, simple way to talk about the overall uh, electronic structure of an atom. Okay, so uh, the next in the predict table, we actually have to think about the lithium atom. Uh, and the lithium atom is going to have three electrons. Right, so uh, in order to understand that, uh, we actually have to think about uh, what are the energy uh, of the wave functions that we have available for that uh, th the third electron. Okay, so if we plot here all of the uh, wave functions that are solution to this Rodinger equation, we will have that the lowest energy wave function is going to be uh, the 1s. And we know that the first two electrons in lithium uh, are going to have 1s wave functions as long as they have anti parallel spins. Now, uh, the Pauli exclusion principle is telling us that uh, the third electron can't have also a 1s wave function because it would have to have either uh, this spin or that spin. Okay, and because no two electrons can have uh, the same spin and the same four quantum numbers, uh, then uh, again the third electron can't have a 1s wave function. It's going to have a different wave function. The question is one, which one is that? In the hydrogen atom, we actually learned that uh, the energies of uh, the 2s and the 2p wave functions were actually degenerate. They were the same. Okay, so uh, the question is, well, uh, if this is the case, uh, what is the wave function that the third electron is going to have? Is it going to be a 2s or is it going to be a 2p? It turns out that for multi-electronic atoms, this degeneracy is lifted and then the energy of the 2s and the 2p uh, wave functions is actually different. Let's try to see uh, why that is. To understand why that is, we actually have to appeal to the concept of uh, effective nuclear charge. Okay, so uh, let's think about the lithium uh, atom. You have three protons in the nucleus, and then you're going to have your uh, uh, two 1s uh, electrons. Okay, uh, and then you're going to have your third electron, which will be right here. Okay. And again, this is what we call the 1s wave function, and then there will be the third electron. Well, uh, if you think about this, uh, about the interactions of uh, this electron with the rest of the particles, uh, what you will say is that, uh, well, this electron is going to be attracted by the th three protons of uh, uh, the nucleus, but at the same time, that electron is going to be repelled by uh, the two electrons that, are, that have 1s wave functions. Okay, so you can see that the overall uh, interactions of that electron uh, in that atom is going to be a combination of, again, the attraction uh, uh, from the protons of the nucleus and the repulsion of the electrons that are intervening between uh, that third electron and the nucleus. Okay, so this can be uh, easily expressed as something that we call the effective nuclear charge. Okay, the effective nuclear charge is, again, just that combination. is just uh, the nominal nuclear charge, right, so the attraction from the three protons in the nucleus minus something that we call a shielding constant, okay? This is the term that accounts for the repulsions of uh, the electrons, uh, uh, the two one's electrons to that uh, third electron, okay, uh, which we can actually uh, uh, visualize or interpret as a shielding constant, okay? So the idea is that because you have these two electrons intervening between the, uh, uh, pro the nucleus, and the third electron, okay, those two electrons are going to shield effectively, okay, the uh, nuclear charge. Okay, so this is uh, the way that we express this, even though it really does not work like that. There's no shielding, but there is this attraction and repulsion. 
Okay, but that repulsion has the effect of countering the attraction, so, so we can say that those electrons effectively are shielding the nominal nuclear charge. Okay, so then uh, uh, it's going to be obvious that when we have to think about uh, what wave function is this electron going to have, a 2s or a 2p, okay, uh, uh, the, most, uh, the lowest energy situation would be uh, one in which uh, that electron uh, has the highest possible effective charge, okay? So uh, uh, the lowest possible shielding. And the question is, well, what is less shielding, a 2s or a 2p wave function? Well, uh, to understand that, we can actually look at how those wave functions look like. Okay? And we can do that by plotting uh, what we call the radial distribution function, which we described in prior videos. And the radial distribution function is simply the probability of finding the electron at a distance r from the nucleus, okay, integrated over all our angles. All right, so for the 2s wave function, we have a radial distribution function that looks like this. Okay, that's what happens for the 2s. And for the 2p, we have a, a radial distribution function that looks like this. Okay, so that is the 2p, and this is the 2s. All right, so what we actually see is that uh, here there is a node for the 2s uh, wave function. Okay, the 2s actually is something more penetrating than what the 2p uh, wave function is. Okay, so notice that this uh, lobe of amplitude right here, okay, closer to the nucleus from the node, Okay, uh, right here, this means that uh, the 2s uh, wave function, the electron having a 2s wave function, can penetrate uh, uh, these charts a little better than the 2p can. And what that means is that, well, the 2s electrons are going to be a little bit less shielded than the 2p electrons. Okay, uh, what that means then is that when you think about the effective nuclear charge, of uh, the 2p and the 2s electrons, what's going to happen is that, again, because the s electrons are more penetrating, okay, the shielding constant is lower, the effective nuclear charge for the 2s electrons increases, and that means more stability, okay, better attractions with the nucleus. The 2p are going to be slightly less uh, uh, attracted to the nucleus because the shielding constant will be le uh, a little uh, higher, and that's because those 2p electrons can't penetrate uh, the nucleus uh, as much as the 2s. But uh, and the, it ends up happening here is uh, lifting of the DNR scheme, and we actually have that the 2s then are going to be ever so slightly lower in energy, in energy than the 2p electrons. Okay, so this uh, uh, clarifies what the electronic configuration then is going to be for uh, the lithium atom. Okay, we have that the two first electrons are going to have 1s wave functions, and the third electron is going to have a 2s wave function. Okay, so when we write the electronic configuration, it's going to be equal to 1s2, 2s1. And again, uh, that means that we can describe 2s1. Again, this means that we can describe the overall uh, electronic wave function for R equal to lithium as uh, follows. We have two electrons uh, having 1s wave functions and anti parallel spins, and then we have um, uh, a third electron uh, having a 2s wave function. And the spin can either be up or down. It doesn't matter because the energy will be exactly the same in the absence of a magnetic field. Okay. Just to illustrate uh, uh, the concept of this uh, effective charge, we can try to continue uh, uh, going through the pre uh, through the periodic table, and then look at uh, this will be the electronic configuration for beryllium, and that will be the electronic configuration for boron, and then we'll have to think about the electronic configuration for carbon, and which we're going to do in the next video. But for now, I just want to illustrate. Uh, what these effective charts uh, uh, are in the case of the carbon atom, which has uh, six electrons. Okay, for uh, the carbon atom, the electronic configuration is going to be 1s2, 2s2, 2p2. Okay, so it turns out that the effective charge for the uh, 1s uh, electrons is going to be 5.6 uh, uh, protons. Okay, the nominal charge is six protons in the nucleus. That means that the shielding constant for the 1s electrons is uh, uh, 0.4. Okay, for the 2s, uh, the uh, effective nuclear charge is 3.2, and for the 2p, the effective nuclear charge is 3.1. Okay, so you can see that really uh, uh, there's a very, very small difference in the uh, effective nuclear charge, and that means the stability uh, of those uh, wave functions, and that is solely due to this tiny little level of amplitude in the radial distribution function of the 2s. Uh, 
orbital that wins the day for the 2s electrons in the case of lithium. Right, so in the next video, we're going to continue to, to then uh, go down the periodic table and write explicitly the electronic configurations for beryllium and then boron, carbon, and so forth.